Shalom. Shalom. Praise you, Abba, our Father. You are good. Your grace, your mercy endures forever. Endeavor is your faithfulness, Father. I ask you, Father, right now to remove everything that is not of you, that is not like you, that does not bring you glory, that may be of me or anyone listening, Father, to remove it. To send out your ministering angels to minister unto me, unto the hearers of your truth. To send out your warring angels, Father, to fight against the plan and the works of the adversary in the hearts of men. Father, just ask you right now to, to allow for your Ruhak to lead us and guide us into all truth, that the eyes of our understanding be enlightened. That we may know you. That we may know you. Praise you, Wabba. That it all be made manifest in the name and the authority of your Son, in the name and the authority of Yeshua. Come and see Selah. 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 Shalom. <clears throat> thy word is truth. And thy word is truth. We are in the epistle of Romans. The letter that was sent from the apostle Paul, Saul, to Romans, that wicked, wicked city, Romans. Yet today, 2018, it is sent to that wicked, wicked heart of man and I would ask uh, anyone who is watching this um, if you haven't yet done so to please start at uh, part one and right now I believe this is part six we are in Romans chapter four Romans chapter four those who have ears hear and we already have been given and fed a lot and by the Ruha that is keep in mind I'm just a guy who reads all right um, so let's continue let's continue to be led by the Ruha and see where he leads us and guides us in his truth and thy word is truth Romans chapter 4 and verse 1 now let's, let's, just, let's just read chapter 3 verse 31 does it follow that we abolish the Torah now, keep in mind, whenever we see Torah, put an equal sign and put teaching, all right? <clears throat> Does it follow that we abolish the Torah by this trusting that we have? Heaven forbid. On the contrary, we confirm the Torah by the trusting. Does it mean because we now have understanding that we it's about trusting that makes us righteous, do we abolish the teachings? No, heaven forbid. For the trusting confirms the teaching. The trusting Confirm the Torah. Chapter 4, <clears throat> verse 1. Then what should we say? Abraham. I love this. Oh, I love this stuff. I love this. I love this stuff. Hallelujah. Then what should we say? Abraham, our father. Our forefather. Obtained by his own efforts. Did he obtain righteousness by his own efforts? Right? For if Abraham came to be considered righteous by Elohim because of legalistic observances, then he has something to boast about. <clears throat> Did Abraham become considered righteous by Elohim because of the Torah? Our forefather, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Abraham, Isaac. Jacob, Abraham, was he considered by Elohim as righteous because of the Torah? Now Abraham did obey Torah. Why? Because <coughs> excuse me, because we understand that Torah equals instructions. So did Abraham obey some instructions that he was given? Of course, we all know this. Get away from that land. Get away from your father's house. Take Isaac and take him up there and sacrifice him. Like Abraham. Oh, and then if we read the book of Jasper, we understand for sure. You know what I'm saying? So Abraham did observe Torah. Because Torah equals teachings. Torah equals instructions. 
Torah equal instruction? Did Abraham observe Torah? Yes, because Abraham observed the instructions he was given by Yah. Okay? But did those, did obedience to those instructions make him righteous? For if Abraham came to be considered righteous by Elohim because of legalistic observances, then he has something to boast about, right? But this is not how it is before Elohim. For what does the Tanakh say? Abraham put his trust in Elohim. And it was credited to his account as righteous. It was accredited to his account as righteous. So let's let's just pause for a second because we're gonna get into some stuff here, right? This is beautiful, beautiful. All right. So, <clears throat> so we already know what the scripture says, right? There was no one righteous but Yah. There's no one righteous but Yah. Even when Yeshua was here on earth, they tried to call him. You know, you righteous, you righteous. He said, Hold up, ain't nobody righteous but my Father in heaven. There's no one righteous but Yah. Okay. So. <clears throat> Now we're about to start talking about accounts and credits, right? Banking or what have you. We all got checking and banking accounts of some sort or have one of some sort, right? Right? So we know about how banking accounts work, okay? Now, thus far we said that what? But this is not how it was before Elohim for what does the Tanakh says? It says what? Abraham put his trust in Elohim and it was credited to his account as righteousness. But... The scripture says that no one is righteous but Elohim. Now we read earlier that we receive righteousness from Elohim. So it's almost like this. It is like this rather. That there's no one righteous but Yah. And we ourselves, Yeshua, Abraham, okay, we all get some righteousness but only from Yah, okay? So it's like this. Um. <clears throat> Only person that can give righteousness out is Yah, because he is the only one that is righteous. Like, if you go in your wallet, your pocket, your purse, whatever, right, and you pull out some cash, you know, pull out a, a $20 bill, okay, pull out a Jackson, you know what I mean? You pull out that cash, okay, now all of us can have, everybody in this whole country can have money in our pocket, can have cash in our pocket, all right, but there's only one entity that produces that particular cash and that's you know the government the US Mint okay the Treasury rather okay so the only entity that produces that cash that's in your pocket is the government so the only person that actually has cash is the government they just give it to us alright okay for us to do what we need to do with it alright so the only place that prints out cash is the US government Yet it's handed out to the people. Now, back to the scriptures, right? Okay, so listen. So, only one that is righteous is Yah. So, the only place we can receive righteousness from is Yah. Not of our own works, lest any should boast. Righteousness comes from Yah. So, now, now, but we all got these accounts in heaven, right? These accounts with Yah. And so he says what? He says, Abraham put his trust in Elohim and it was credited to his account as righteous. So because Abraham trusted in Yah, his account got some righteousness put in it. Why? Because the only place that righteousness can come from is Yah. So because of trust in Yah, Yah took some righteousness that only he had and put it inside of Abraham's account. This stuff is basic. Even a child can understand. Even a baby can understand this, right? Right? Let's keep reading. Verse 3, chapter 4, Romans. But what does the Tanakh say? Abraham put his trust in Elohim, and it was credited to his account as righteousness. Now, the account of someone who is working, this is simple but beautiful. I love the, the profound simplicity of these teachings. To Paul's epistles. Now, the account of someone who is working is 
credited not on the grounds of grace but on the grounds of what is owed to him dig that like <clears throat> you working a job you know what I'm saying and you finna get that money right because it's owed to you you put in you make ten dollars an hour I pray you make more than that right but you know it's all good you make ten dollars an hour you work 40 hours a week and therefore you know them people owe you four hundred dollars and they put it in your account, deposit at 12 a.m. on whatever your payday is. Why? Not because of grace. Because it's owed to you. So whenever the word credited to an account meant language, I told you, when it comes to Paul, please pay attention to the word, play it to the verbiage, you know what I mean? So he says that now the account of someone who is working is credited not on the ground of grace, but on the ground of what is owed to him. However, in the case of one who is not working, but rather is trusting in him, who makes ungodly people righteous, his trust is a credit to him as righteousness. So what Paul is saying is this it's stuff I know it sound tricky but it ain't so what Paul is saying here look and he goes back to our forefather because this is the perfect example he goes back to our forefather before the Torah what we thought was the Torah was ever written before the law that Moses gave to Torah equals instructions when you hear Torah it's not just you know uh, um, um, the first five books it's not you know what I'm saying what Moses came down from the mountain with no Torah simply equals instructions. Torah simply equals teachings. Torah simply equals do this, don't do this, do this, don't do this. All right. So the writer Paul goes back before what we look at as the the law of most shape. You go back to the forefather Abraham. Start talking about accounts. Okay. So the account of Abraham was accredited. As righteous from Elohim because he is the only one that is righteous so he's the only one that can hand out righteousness and we know that if someone's account get credited if you work on a job only way your account gonna get that credit on it is if it's owed to you so how is it that it's owed to you be, you know because you put in that work so the work that, that that Abraham put in not actual work so what Abraham did or what he performed or what he walked in rather thank you father what he walked in that calls for Yah to owe him Righteousness was trust. 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 See, we got like two currencies going on here, right? Let's say you work at McDonald's, right? You have a currency, and McDonald's, your employer, has a currency, right? McDonald's currency is cash. They owe you money. The currency you have, well, let's put it this way. You got two things that you bring into the table, all right? What McDonald's gonna bring to the table is you a paycheck. What you gonna bring to the table is labor. You know, you're gonna flip some burgers, dump some fries, right? Make an ice cream cone, you know what I mean? Whatever it is you do there, you know, mop a floor, I don't know, all right? So you're bringing your services, your labor, that's what you're bringing to the table, and McDonald's is bringing to the table a paycheck. Two different things, you know, an agreement. They're gonna bring that to the table, okay? So what happens here, what Paul is saying, so we can understand it, okay, now you have an account. Now, what Yah has, because he's the only one that's righteous, he has righteousness. Boom. He got righteousness he giving out. That's what he giving out. And people accounts, he throwing righteousness in your account. Bam, you got some righteousness. Bam, you got some righteousness, right? Okay, so he's handing out righteousness and putting it in people's account. So what is the thing that the people or a person has on their end that they're bringing to the table? Is it obedience to the law? That ain't what he accept. Ain't what he accept. You work for McDonald's, and they, and you think you know what I'm saying they owe you a check, and you like yeah um you know, I still been Burger King. I work you know 40 hours. They like hold on, <laughs> you worked at Burger King, man. You ain't work here. How we owe you money? You know what I'm saying? So it's not what 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 y'all accept to get righteousness from him. That exchange is trust. You give him trust, he give you righteousness. You give him trust, he give you righteousness. You give him trust, he gives you righteousness. You flip them burgers for Mickey D, they give you a check. Simple stuff. Alright? 
Let's keep reading. Now, the account of someone who is working is credited not on the grounds of grace, but on the ground of what is owed to him. However, in the case of one who is not working, but rather is trusting in him who makes the ungodly people righteous, his trust is a credit to him as righteousness. Beautiful. He took something that's ungodly, made him righteous by you exchanging trust in him. Praise you, Father. You are good. Your grace and your mercy endure. The weapon that was of faithfulness. Praise you, Father. You are good. Your grace and your mercy endures. Whoever endeavors your faithfulness. If you are righteous, you are holy. You are good. So good. Good, good Father. It's who you are. It's who you are. Verse 6. In the same way, the blessing which David pronounces is on those whom Elohim credits with righteousness apart from legalistic observances. See, he got to understand something. He keeps saying, apart, apart, apart. Righteousness, apart from observing the law. Righteousness, apart from legalistic observances. Now, we do need to observe what's law. Because that keeps us in line because this body, our nature, is naturally bent against y'all. All right? So, we don't understand how this, this body works. For real, we think we know, but how to properly have it function, he knows because he made it. So he hands us the handbook. Eat this, eat that, don't eat this, don't eat that. Live like this, dress like this, walk like this, talk like this. Don't do this, don't do that. This is the law of this body in this world to properly function. Okay? He could break the law, but there's a penalty. If you're going 85 miles an hour in a 65 an hour zone, 65 mile an hour zone, you can definitely do that. Perfectly fine. You're a choice, but there's a penalty. Okay? So he gives us instructions to conduct ourselves in the parameters of this world, in this body, in this world we live in that he created. But then he understands we have an adversary. So there's certain laws that we need to obey to keep ourselves protected from the one that's coming against us, the one that's looking out to get us, like the police looking out to get whoever break that law. That's how the adversary is. He's looking out to get whoever transgress. He's going to get you. All right? Because he has the right to get us when we break the law. Because then we outside, we operated outside of parameters that y'all set for us. Simple stuff. Bless are those whose transgressions are forgiven. Whose sins are covered over. Blessed is the man who sin Yahweh will not reckon against his account. David said, Blessed is the man who Yah won't reckon the sins against his account. So a man is sinful, and there's an account that Yah has in heaven of each every person. Then he says, Blessed is the man who sin don't go against his account. Stuff is simple. Let's keep going. Now this is the blessing. Now is this the blessing? Hallelujah. Now is this the blessing for the circumcised only? Question mark. Or is it for the uncircumcised? Question mark. We'll leave that to the next segment. Now is this the blessing for the circumcised only? Or for also the circumcised? The uncircumcised. Is this the blessing for the circumcised only? Question mark. Or is this the blessing for the uncircumcised also? Question mark. But we know already. We just went through like eight verses. That's it, chapter four. But we understand that there, we have an account in the heavens. And the and the and the currency of that account is righteousness. That's what's deposited. And that's what's taken out. Righteousness. And how do we deposit righteousness into our account? Through trusting. How do we get a paycheck from McDonald's? We labor. How do we get a paycheck? We labor. Okay? Those who have ears, hears. Shalom.